Well, good morning and welcome to today's episode of The Word. I'm glad that you were with us today. Today we begin a new mini-series, another four weeks of learning about God. Today is ultimately about connecting people to Jesus. That's our theme, connecting people to Jesus. We're going to be talking fundamentally about our four major parts of our ministry here at Faith Lutheran Church. And those ministry parts are meaningful worship, conversational discipleship, outreach and service, and faith-filling school. Now, because of the time period, we won't be dealing with each one of those parts in that order because it's back to school time and we're going to be talking about school-related, the faith-filling school next week. Big plug. So, that's next week. This is this week. We're going to be talking about our context of meaningful worship, what it is. So, our theme right now, today, is going to be preaching, praying, and serving. That's our theme for today. So, be right back. We will be right after, we'll be back with you right after this. So, preaching, praying, and serving. What does that mean? Well, that's part of our worship. It's part of what we do Sunday morning. We do it for you so that the preaching of God's word may be built, may build you up and strengthen you and equip your faith. That the praying, a part of our time of worship, will be a time of sharing with God what is going on in our lives so that you are encouraged with hope and serving and noticing that in meaningful worship, it is not my service to God, but it is God's service to me. And that's what it's all about engaging with love. So we're going to tie all of these wonderful things together. I invite you to grab your Bibles, please. We're going to look at our gospel lesson, which will be for this coming Sunday, which will be Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 through 17. So if you take a moment, grab your Bible, and I'll see you right back on the flip side. All right, do you have your Bibles? Awesome. Let's get going. All right, Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 through 17. Now when he had heard that John had been arrested, meaning John the Baptist, he withdrew into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who are dwelling in the region of the shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. From that time Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, we begin by preaching. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's not about the kingdom of heaven, meaning hanging out with God wherever heaven may be. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, meaning I'm right here. I'm right with you. I am right here with you. I am here to share with you and show you the grace and the mercy that God has given. I am here to lead you into a life of repentance. And in the context of repentance, what does that mean? It means of contrition, sorrow for sins. The willingness to turn around and turn away from said sins and turn toward God and to ask for forgiveness, to receive that forgiveness for the sake of Jesus Christ. That's what we ultimately lead people with in the context of our time together in worship. Leading them by means of the proclamation of law and gospel. God's law meaning saying, I am a sinful person. I am in need of forgiveness. God, please forgive me. 
and the preaching of the gospel. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is here with you. The kingdom of God is right here in your neighborhood. The kingdom of God is right here in your presence and in your time and space. For wherever two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the middle of them. So, the kingdom of heaven is here. That's what we preach. That's what we proclaim. And we talk about it. We talk to God about it. We say, God, thank you for, for forgiving me of all of my sins. Thank you for the new life. And in prayer, we begin to pray for others. We pray for the, the needs of others that are here in this world. We pray and we praise and we give thanks to God for all of his service for his service to us. And that's the biggest point that I want to share with you. It's not my service. The, the worship service is not about me. I mean, it's not about me that says, this is, look at what I do. I'm doing this all for you. I'm praising you. I'm praying. I'm listening. These are all true. These are all necessary as a part of worship. But for us, especially as Lutherans, it's about the service of God. Think about this in a minute. In our service, we have confession and absolution. That's the work of God. Work of God in leading you to repentance and confession, leading us to receive the service of God, and that's the forgiveness of sins by means of Jesus. We receive that service. We receive the service of God through his word proclaimed that continues to equip us. God is serving us by giving us his word. God is equipping us by giving us his word so that it will encourage us with the hope and the promise of God so that it will build us up so we can serve others. But it starts with the service of God. It starts with what he does. It's his service that is happening. And the last part of the service of God is the service of the sacraments. Holy baptism, a person is forgiven by the washing of rebirth and renewal in the Holy Spirit through the water and the word. New life comes to people. It is done also in the service of Holy Communion, which we will be celebrating this morning. The body and the blood of Jesus Christ that is contained in and with the bread and the wine that forgives us our sins. It's the body and blood of Jesus that is the act of forgiveness. That's God's service to you, to me. Now, right now we're just scratching the surface in the regards to worship. But those things, preaching, prayer, and service, those are the things that make worship meaningful because they bring the power of God into your life. So I love to see you this morning in worship, receiving all of those wonderful gifts, receiving his service and grace and mercy, blatant, unadulterated plug advertisement for you to be with me and God, most importantly. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching and being a part of this video. We'll talk to you really soon.